Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Frankie Hardwork with another video. And on this video, I want to talk about the Breakfast Club interview with um, Kamala Harris yesterday. So, yeah, I watched the Breakfast Club interview from Kamala Harris yesterday. And it was, um, uh, to say the least, it was pretty interesting, you know. It, was, it wasn't a detailed, it wasn't an in-depth uh, interview to me. But you definitely could draw some conclusions from that, you know. You could definitely draw your conclusions on how you feel from that interview. That interview actually explained a decent amount of um, information or decent or how you look at it, pretty much. So, when I seen that... Um, interview. First of all, I'd like to state that uh, when I watched the interview part, man, it seemed like to me, because I got my notes right here, so it seemed like to me that she was like, from the beginning, she kind of knew not to approach the Breakfast Club interview. It's like she watched the Breakfast Club interview with Cory Booker and did the almost the opposite of what he did. It's like she kind of figured that out. Like, I'm not going to move like this. I'm going to move totally different. Like, I honestly said I could tell by watching the interview and how she was expressing black, saying the word black and things of that nature more than Cory Booker was. So she figured that out. I, I, she, she figured out. I could clearly see that. Another thing I noticed about her when I, when I watch it, but then when it goes further down the line, and, you know, Charlamagne was asking her about, and, and another thing, I wasn't, I, even though I like when Charlamagne asked some questions, I don't like the way sometimes he phrased it, like he's trying to undermine how black people feel, you know what I'm saying? Like when he was saying that, uh, pretty much um, when he was asking her about black people feel as though we want a black agenda. Okay, I'm glad that you did ask that question. I'm glad you did try to get her to talk about it, but it was the way you brought it out, like you wanted to undermine us, like, we're saying something that's just sound ridiculous or something. You know what I mean? We do need a black agenda. So that was one thing. But when he asked that question, you know, the first thing, you know, I, I always realized they always, like, she actually had more things to talk about when she said about black agenda. She actually had more explanation than Cory Booker. But the thing was, the black agenda wasn't a specific black agenda. You understand? We're looking for a specific black agenda. You understand? And she didn't. She didn't clarify that. She went around the picture saying sixty. This will help, like the the, the, the credit, um, the five to, to the family for five hundred dollars, six thousand dollars credit a year for the families, five hundred dollars a month. She automatically said it would, it would lift up sixty percent of the Black American families. Okay, that's good. It's only numbers. We don't know that yet, right? But my whole thing is, you still didn't give us a specific Black agenda. Like you say all these things. When you say all these things, you say Black and Brown. That's another thing I just don't understand. Like. Why can't we always be in our own category? Like, when you mention other groups of people, you mention them by their group. With us, we get mentioned as black and brown. That's what I don't understand. So, and then another thing I realized, too, it seemed like the Cory Booker plan that he was talking about was almost as similar to hers. She just changed it up a little bit. So, you clearly see that they was talking or, or something about it. You can clearly see that. Okay, and another thing I didn't like in that interview, right, was the fact that she was kind of skating through a lot of answers, and I felt like Charlemagne was taking it easy on her. Sorry for keep looking down, but this is my um, my notes. So I felt like Charlemagne was taking it easy on her. You ask me, you know what I'm saying? And and to me, that's how she got through that interview a little bit longer and a little bit a little bit more laxed. But then when you when he asked some of the questions that he was asking her, like for instance, um. One of the questions that I noticed that I asked her, when he asked her, she was like kind of confused, was the question that he asked her, do she, is she supported by big businesses and uh, big banks? Because we all know that she fought against the banks, you know, for uh, basically for like a California deal or something like that. She pulled out, she was stating, but, you know, so we know that she basically, you know, fought the big banks and he asked her. Do you uh, support, uh, are you supported by big banks and, and corporations? And she, she looked at kind of confused right there. Like, she looked at confused to me. Like, when she, she said, no, no, I don't believe so. Not that I know of. And it's like, she wasn't sure. And then she was looking around the room. I guess she was looking for the person that she came there with. And the look that she gave her was like, do I? And that was just my opinion when I noticed that. So, um. I just wanted to say that because that was that was kind of telling to me that she's obviously not involved with or she's she's purposely either she's purposely involved of staying away from the finances to keep herself clear of any type of wrongdoing and things of that nature or she just don't know. 
and um, that's kind of troubling for me, you know, because if you if you so if you so into not taking out, you know, to take over the banks and things that you you if you fought against the banks and things of that nature, and that shouldn't even be a, a question that you have to look over or confused about. Like that should be something that you was very strong and adamant about. And I, I felt like on that you didn't you wasn't strong and adamant about that. So it was another thing that Charlemagne was saying too about. Um, you know, black people getting their information from Instagram pretty much because I don't know how it would, he, and that's an insult to me that we look at memes and we pretty much believe everything memes say without research and things like that. So that right there was kind of an insult a little bit. Like, and then he was how he was saying because he understand, but it might go over other black people head. And it's like, come on, Charlotte, man, you got to give black people more credit than that. You're a black man yourself. You got to give black people more credit than that. We are definitely on top of our, our politics, especially nowadays. I think it really started when Obama became president, when we got more interested in it. And then we start seeing some of the the, 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 the evil and the dark side of the politics. I mean, people been in it, but I'm talking about this particular generation. I'm not going to lie. I always was into politics, but not as much as I was as I became 2008, 2007, when I seen Obama running. And then throughout the years, I got more educated on it. You understand? And I feel like that's what happened with us. So I feel like he kind of discredited us on that. I, I, I didn't like that at all. And um, another thing, I'm not trying to try to start trouble, but, you know, Solomon is funny, you know. So certain things that he was saying to me, like when he was saying that, how do you feel about people? Because, you know, he stated he wanted to make sure. And it seemed like they were stressing her blackness in here real um, strong. And she, she made a comment about basically like, well, first of all, she she was they was they were stressing the blackness in there. So Charlemagne asked her, "How do you feel about people saying that you're pandering to black people when because you're not black?" And she stated that, you know, they don't know the definition of blackness. You understand? See, see how they trying to like belittle us. See how everybody's belittling us and how everybody say things like we don't understand this and we don't understand that. That's not right that people does that. It's not it's not right at all. And when he said that, and when I go about to say I'm not trying to start no beef or things of that nature, but when he said that, to me, that's just me. I could be wrong. To me, I felt like he was either instigating or throwing little shots at Tariq Nashi. That's just my opinion. I feel like he was throwing little shots at him. I feel like when, I'm pretty sure when a lot of people watch this interview, I'm going to get to that in a second, that... Tariq Nashi was definitely on their mind watching this. You know, a lot of people that's influenced by this, uh, by his uh, talking and things of that nature. I can definitely see, I know for a fact people had to be thinking about it. I was, you know, because I was thinking about a lot of things that he said, things of that nature. And, um, yeah, I felt like Charlamagne was definitely throwing shots right there. So, you understand? So, to me, I feel like her campaign... Uh, I'm not going to, I don't feel like it represent me as a black man. You know, and I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not one of these guys that's just like, just talking just to be talking. It doesn't represent me. I mean, she came up with the reentry program. That wasn't specific for black people, but I'm pretty sure it definitely helped black people out, you know, with the reentry program. But I feel like there's loops holding, loopholes in that. You know what I mean? When you look at certain people that come out of jail and get certain degrees, a lot of, it's a small amount of people that don't get the, the good, good jobs that, that are black. A lot of non-blacks that come from jail actually gain gain more wealth, gain more work, gain a lot more than the black person that come out of jail. So like I said, it's loops holding that. And that was a lot of things that I feel like when a president a presidential uh, candidate talks about, when they talk about a black agenda, for some reason it's not a never a black agenda, it's always a black and brown agenda. And no disrespect to nobody. You know what I'm saying? But I just feel like we need to focus on a black agenda. We, we, we never have nothing specifically telling me for us. And I don't understand that. You understand? And you know what I else was found that was pretty interesting when I was watching this? Because I watched it late last night. I watched the interview last night. And it was something that I, I really didn't see. And one of the things I really never seen before was... I, this may seem simple, but I was looking at the legs at a breakfast club. You understand? And the time I was watching it, it was about three... Point nine or 4,000 likes and almost 5,000 dislikes. So I'm seeing a lot of people getting on cold pretty much. I'm seeing a lot of people watch that interview and a lot of people um, is definitely feeling some type of way. 
even when I was looking in the comment section, all I seen in the comment section was tangible 2020, ADOS, no tangible, no votes. So be, people's definitely being on cold. And um, I have to applaud, you know, Tariq Nasheed for a lot of this. And I also have to applaud, because um, I just watched this this morning, and I'm glad I did watch this. It was uh, um, the, basically the creator of ADOS, hashtag ADOS, was talking about it. And I didn't even, I never heard him. I'm not going to lie. So I am glad that I wrote, I mean, I watched it before I spoke on this interview because he basically broke down ADOS. You understand? So we also, his name was Tone. It's called Tone Talks. But yeah, I was watching that and he broke down a lot. And he was talking about Angela Ryan and, and you know, her outlook on certain things. And I'm, I don't have enough information on that yet to go depth into that. So I'm going to leave that alone. But like I said, I'm glad I watched that this morning because he put a lot of things in, in perspective for me. You understand? So, you know, by watching that Kamala Harris interview, it was just, to me, it seemed like she was just going all around the questions and doing a lot of talking. You know what I mean? A lot of talking, but especially when it comes to, like, black issues. You know, it's like we can never have our own conversation. No, it's got to be black and brown, black and brown, blah, 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 blah. It's never a straight black conversation because we know, listen, we know that black people are struggling the most, right? And it's not because we lazy and things of that nature. It's because the the odds that's against us. You understand? You know what I mean? From from law enforcement on the education. You understand? It's so and, and and a bunch of things between that law law enforcement education. You understand? And people don't people don't get it. It's not no. It's nothing about laziness. My brand is hard work. I'm a hard-working dude, straight like that. So it's not about being lazy. It's about the the the, 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 the chips that we got stacked against. It's about the the pushback that we get. You know, we always getting overlooked. We always left out a lot of things when they told. Me, and the thing about it is, we get used for a lot of things, but we don't get nothing in return. So me watching that Kamala Harris interview. It was a good interview. It was good. It, was a, it wasn't in depth as I would like it to be. It was a good interview because it gives me an idea of how she is, you know? And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be honest with you. She's very charismatic. You know, she's a likable person. She seems like she's a likable person. But when you go into her politics and things of that nature, it's not, it's not what's up. And like I said, they really were stressing the blackness in this one. Like, that was the thing. They, that, like, to me, I feel like she's a chosen candidate already. So don't be surprised that that'd be our, cho that'd be our candidate for the Democrats. Because I, like, I feel like she's too confident. There's nothing wrong with being confident, but sometimes she's just a little too confident. Because they don't, they want a, this right there would be perfect for them to run against Donald Trump. She's a black woman, right? Right? Um... She's uh, married to a white man. You understand? She's into politics. She was a, a prosecutor. So that would go good against Donald Trump. Because, you know, Donald Trump had to get real disrespectful. And I think that it's going to be hard for him to actually come that hard like that. But I'm not going to beat you on the head about the interview. Probably make another video about it. But that was just my outtake on the Kamala Harris interview. You know, like I said, it was interesting to watch. But me personally, I don't have a particular candidate that I'm looking to vote for yet. I mean, it's a while from now, but I, I learned this lesson to really do my research and check the record and check the credit. You understand? So thank you for taking the time out to watch my video. It was just a little my opinion about the Kamala Harris interview. So, hey, y'all have a good day and stay out the way. It's your boy Frankie Hard Work. Be easy.